Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We are working on our magazine junk journal today. And today we're working on the cover and on two page ideas. Just a little disclaimer that sometimes my background noise is not always quiet because I have two puppies who are currently both recovering from surgeries. I have kids who are home and my house is never quiet. So just a disclaimer, if that's going to bother you, then you might want to put like it on mute or something. I try really hard to keep it quiet and I think I do a pretty good job, but sometimes you'll hear like background noise. So sorry about that. Okay, so I was just showing you um, the page that I had previously made and all it is is just a book page that has been coffee dyed, folded in half and just things glued on it. I've got burlap glued on as a pocket. I made the little tag there you saw with a playing card and that was also coffee dyed. So I'll go into that a little bit more in detail later. But now I'm just doing the cover and I thought, well, I'd like to see some pink on there because, hello, when have you not seen Chaotic Mom throw pink on a page? So I don't like the bright pink. I wanted to tone it down a little bit with the white, but I didn't want to pre-mix them. So I just threw them both on there. If you remember correctly, I prepped these pages in my last video with some white paint and some baking soda. And I believe I used glue. Yes, I used Aileen's Tacky Glue. So it's got a nice, the page has a nice firm texture because I glued three of them together and then put this mixture on top of it. And so it's, the page is nice and firm and it has like a real good grip on the top of it to hold the paint nice. To tell you the truth, I didn't even really know where I was going with the front of this. I just knew that I wanted to leave the face on there. And then when I started looking at it, I really didn't like the way the face looked on there. Um, and I didn't know how to incorporate it into the rest of the page. So you'll see me struggle a little bit, but I think it turned out okay. If you guys are doing this junk journal with me, what are you guys putting on the front of your junk journals? Are you going for like floral, vintage, um, pink? Are you going with a color, purple, blue, birds? Uh, I know some people do nature. I really wanna do a nature themed journal. I have a lot of nature books and things, so I think I could probably fill up a nature themed journal. I think I need to do that. Here's where I'm telling myself to just stop touching it because that's my problem. I don't know when to leave well enough alone. Okay, so let me just tell you about these little beauties. Look at how beautiful these are. And they're a heavyweight card stock. And I bet you'll never guess what they are. I have a ton of them too. I have a whole bag of them. They are garland from the Dollar Tree from springtime. All they were were these and they had little pieces of clear tape and they were put on a string. I wish I had the bag to show you, but like a ton of them came for a dollar. And this is only two different um, garlands. So I got a ton of ephemera for $2 and it took me maybe 15, 20 minutes of sitting on the couch, just pulling the tape off. And the tape comes off super easy. And as you can see, it doesn't leave any mark on the flowers at all. So it was a little bit too big and there was a little bit too much white space on it. I wanted to cut it down. So I'm just fussy cutting some of the white off. And then I go in with some of my ink now that is not Dollar Tree, and I said I was gonna stay 100% Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna tell on myself, and tell you that the white glue that you see in the bottle, that's not Dollar Tree either, that is actually reptile glue, and I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I actually accidentally grabbed that glue because it's always in front of me, and I forgot that I was trying to stay 100% Dollar Tree. Now, I feel like the reptile glue is a little bit better than the Aileen's Tacky Glue, 
but saying that I do use Aileen's tacky glue even in my handmade products that I sell on Etsy so obviously I think the Aileen's is strong otherwise I wouldn't use it on products that I sell on Etsy so I think it's a great product um, would I think it works just as well for this project particularly absolutely so anytime you see me pick up that bottle with white glue in it it is reptile glue but i think that you could use the aileen's tacky glue the same exact way i do really love this distress oxide and i think that if you order one thing to have in your craft room that's like not dollar tree or you know a name brand product i think i would probably say it would be this because I think the colors and the quality of it, I don't know, I just don't feel like I can get that color and that like quality from the markers or the DIYs that I've done with them. So I would say to get grab one of these and I think that it's worth it. So like I said, I wasn't really feeling like that face kind of popping off right there so I wanted to make it kind of a little bit more cartoony so I went in with a blue marker a black marker and a white marker to fill in the blue part of the eye and then of course do the white for the you know highlights and then the black I went in and did like real black you know eyeliner and big black lashes I don't know if it helped or not. I like the way it turned out in the end, but it does kind of look weird with the face hanging out <laughs> just off the side there. But you'll see what I do to kind of make it part of the front in a, in a little bit. But just stay with me. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Just stay with me here. <laughs> I gotta tell you, you're gonna see me put glue on the back of this flower over and over and over again because I didn't let the paint dry all the way. I bet you guys are all shocked that I was impatient and didn't let something dry. Shocked. Now when I go for vintage looks, I think it kind of gives me the permission to like rip everything and I don't know just kind of use scraps and I don't like not have to have to get the cutter out and cut straight lines and I really like doing vintage stuff because it gives me the ability to rip paper and not have to have the straight lines and to cut on the two and one quarter inch sometimes that gets on my nerves actually a lot of times that gets on my nerves because if you watched my videos I hate measuring so that's why I love vintage work so much you rip it you tear it it looks great that's the way it's supposed to look so I love getting all the different materials out this is a fabric tape right here they used to sell this at the Dollar Tree a long time ago and I'm really sad they don't sell it anymore. They used to have this in a purple one and a black one. They had pink ones. And I still have a couple. You'll see me use a couple of them throughout this. But I'm really sad they don't have the fabric tape anymore. Tell me if you guys have um, your Dollar Tree, if you guys have this fabric tape anymore. Let me know if you guys had it in the past because we had a ton of it. It had to have been at least seven or eight years ago though. Was it seven? Yeah, seven or eight years ago, I think they had it. This is a new uh, washi tape that I just got at the Dollar Tree. I think it's beautiful. I'm really surprised actually. It looks like a Maggie Holmes washi tape. It's got tons of bright pink flowers on it, like watercolor flowers with um, leaves and greenery in the background, super pretty. I'm digging into my bag of leftover transfer 
um, pieces from the Dollar Tree. These are all the leftovers that I have, but I also have, of course, new packages because I stocked up on those. These gold ones I haven't seen recently. I got these a long time ago, but the black and white ones, the vintage ones, I am all stocked up on. So I'm getting out all my transfers and seeing what I can put on here and seeing what else I can throw on this. I love the copy stain doily that I'm gonna put on it right there on the left-hand side. That is gorgeous. Don't forget to coffee stain your items if you're going for a vintage look. It literally takes paper and completely changes the look of it. It completely changes the look of any kind of paper. White paper, line paper, it makes the lines on the line paper, it makes the blue lines kind of fade or it makes the blue line ink run depending on what brand you get and it looks super cool. So don't forget to coffee your tea stain your paper. Changes the whole look of it. This is where everything started to make sense. This fashion word. Thank God I found this fashion word. This is where everything's gonna pull together. Now the face makes sense. <laughs> I was waiting for something to pull that face in to make this whole junk journal make sense. And the word fashion or style, there's the word style right there, or even beauty I could have done. But fashion just jumped out at me because of the, uh, the font that fashion's written in I really liked. But now it makes sense, so I've got the face with the overdrawn eyes and fashion, and now it makes sense. <laughs> so, yay! I thought about cutting this part out and saving time on the video because all I'm doing is just holding stuff up there. But I don't want to do that because I want you to know that crafting is not just oh, I put this together and I put that together and I am put this together and boom, I have a journal. No, it's a lot of, is this going to look right? I don't know. This might look right. I don't know. I Go back to that. I don't know. That doesn't look right. Maybe I want this. See? And so I want you guys to see that even, you know, even though I have all this stuff in my craft room, I don't just sit down at my desk and pop out a craft. I actually sit at my desk. Oh, look, I have to glue the flower down again because I was impatient and didn't let the paint dry. Anyway, um, I have to sit down at my desk and I have to hold stuff up to the journal and see if that's going to look right. And that's not going to look right. I have to go through the creative process over and over in my head. So don't for one minute think that just because um, somebody else might have more products than you that they can just sit down and, you know, just do a craft really simple because they have more product than you. And that's not the way it works. Um, we still have to sit down and like come up with an idea. So don't ever get discouraged if it takes a long time for you to do a craft. It takes everybody a long time to do a craft. It's called the creative process. And quite frankly, that's what I love about doing crafts. I love the creative process. I like seeing what works and what doesn't work. If you hear the growling in the background, that is totally my dog. It's a little tiny itsy bitsy growl and you might not hear it, but he is just behind me just growling away because his sister's on the other side of the gate because I can't keep them together because they're playing too rough. So if you hear that, that's what that is. It sounds like a moan, but I swear to God, it's not a moan. It's a dog. I finally found these tiny pearls again at the Dollar Tree. I have not seen these in so long, and I just found them last week. They're not in with the regular crafts. They're like on an end cap, and I don't know why. They come with their own little tube of super glue. Of course, I don't use the super glue with them, but I don't know. They're, I don't, they, they're not, they are self-adhesive. 
And so I don't know why they come with the super glue. Maybe, and they're not Dollar Tree brand either, so I don't know, but I absolutely love them. I had planned on using some burlap to put the spine on this, but then I saw this doily and I thought that would be really pretty to wrap it around just the front there and wrap it all the way around the back. So I went ahead and did that. And I don't know if I'm gonna go back and do anything else to the spine. I might, I don't know. I keep going back to the front and you'll see me, even when I'm working on the pages, you'll see me go back to the front and put more on the front. So I think the front is always like an evolving thing throughout the whole project. And I find that with my other projects too. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes I do have like a layout in my head and I do the layout, but especially when it comes to junk journals where you just keep adding layers and layers and layers, that definitely happens. So I'll get done, quote unquote, done with the front and then I'll start working on the inside and all of a sudden I'll realize that stuff, stuff keeps getting added to the front. So that's probably what's going to happen with this. I did notice that, you know, I'm, I'm still adding to the front, but I like the way it's coming out. Note to self, always, always, always change your blade before starting a new project. This blade was obviously very dull and I tore that. I mean, I'm not worried about it, of course, but I tore it because number one, it had, it had glue on it, so it was wet, so it was very delicate anyway. And then my blade must have been dull. And so there you go. Why am I cleaning a blade I'm fixing to throw away? That was ridiculous. That was really silly. I'm literally about to change that blade and I cleaned it. Oh well, whatever. So this bottle right here, I keep on my desk. I told you last video, um, it has water with a little tiny like squirt of the Dawn Power Foam in it. And it's just enough Dawn Power Foam to not leave like a residue or anything but enough to clean up back here. I'm at the back of the house in the dining room. That's where my craft room is. It's in our formal dining room. We don't use a dining room. I don't even know who does anymore. So I said, you know what? We don't, we don't use a dining room. I'm making that my craft room. But since it is far away from the kitchen, I didn't wanna to have to get up and go clean everything every time I needed to clean something. So I just put that little bottle of water and little tiny bit of dish soap in there. And then I just clean my items as I go. And at the end of a project, I will get up and clean all my paint brushes. I'll clean everything thoroughly, but just to get it out, you know, out of the scissors, get the glue off the scissors, get the paint out of the brushes for the meantime, I will go ahead and do that. So now I'm working on the inside cover. I decided I wanted to put a little envelope in here. And this is just what I'm doing. I am sure that there is a quicker way to make an envelope, envelope, however you say it. Um, but this is just what I'm doing. I'm gonna cut down this envelope. I'm gonna change the shape of the flap. I'm gonna seal up the sides and that's gonna be my envelope for the front. In junk journals, I love putting extra places for um, tuck spots, whether it be receipts that you wanna save or pictures or just little notes that you wanna include. I think it's really important to have extra spaces in junk journals to be able to have memory keeping. Um, tickets, a napkin, um, I know when I went on vacation in North Carolina, this was so cute. There was this little downtown eatery that we went to and with your receipt, they gave you this vintage postcard and it was a black and white vintage postcard and it was so adorable. And I thought, oh my God, that is such a cute idea. And it was this, um, 
The building looked like the inside of like a warehouse. Like it had exposed pipes in it and it was very like galvanized metal inside and things like that. But they made it work for them. Um, it was in downtown Raleigh, I believe, in North Carolina. Anyway, cutest little eatery, had great food. And then when they gave you the receipt with this vintage postcard, it was just so cute. And so, of course, that's something you want to save for a junk journal. So that's where envelopes and tuck spots come in. And I think that that's really important to put plenty of those in junk journals. So the very first page, of course, I wanted to be an envelope. Now that I have my little envelope made, the real question is how am I going to cover this page? So my options were paint or paper, and I just do not have the patience to let another layer of paint dry because I didn't even let the first layer of paint dry. So we're just going to go ahead and cover it with paper. And this is what I mean. Now all of a sudden I'm back on the front again. How did this happen? So the front's never done until the whole journal's done, I guess. Oh,
was trying to decide what else to put on here to cover up, so I decided to get out my alcohol inks. These are my DIY alcohol inks, and I will link that video in the description box below. I made them with alcohol and permanent markers from the Dollar Tree in these little bottles. So I'm just going to put a couple drops on here just to kind of give it some color, and then I'll go from there. I'm not going to let this dry properly either, by the way. It's kind of my thing. Love to add different layers of texture on pages and so I got out this um, crepe paper and I was just gonna go ahead and scrunch it up and put staples every so often to keep it kind of ruffled up like that I've seen people sew um, down the middle to keep it scrunched up like that but I don't sew so the next best thing I guess I found was stapling it you could also hot glue too. I've done hot gluing, but I didn't have the hot glue gun out. I didn't feel like plugging it in, so stapling it was. When working with wet glue, I really like to get the bone folder out and really um, adhere the pieces of paper together, or I'll go ahead and um, spread the glue out with a spatula or something to make sure that it's completely um, covered. Every inch of paper is covered. But here I didn't spread it out, so I just went ahead and got the bone folder out and really pressed on it to make sure that they were adhered together. I'm just going to keep going on with um, decorating these pages and I'm going to set the rest to music for you. If you guys have any questions about what I'm using or how I'm doing anything, please don't be afraid to ask. I'm more than happy to answer any questions, but I think it's all pretty self-explanatory as, as you watch it. Like I said, the only unlabeled things that I use are the glue, which I already told you what it was and everything else you can just buy at a craft store Tuesday mornings or you don't even have to buy you can just um, use whatever you have like instead of a bone folder use a butter knife or instead of an exacto knife use a pair of scissors um, markers you don't have to use the brand that I use I really love the Bic markers use the Dollar Tree markers um, everything else is Dollar Tree. So there you go. But like I said, if you have any questions, please ask. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. But I hope you enjoy um, me in decorating this and I hope you get some ideas. Okay, I thought I was done talking for a while. It turns out I'm not. We have to talk about these Dollar Tree tickets. Okay, they're really cool because they're tickets. And everybody loves tickets for ephemera. At least I do. I think everybody does. A lot of people on YouTube love tickets for ephemera. Put it that way. But these tickets don't really look like tickets because they're just square. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with my hole puncher, also Dollar Tree, and I'm just punching out the corners there but then it leaves these weird gaps so you have to go in with your 
scissors and you have to cut off the gaps. Um, I should have probably put this in slow motion, but I didn't. And I can't go back and undo it because that would just cause me a lot of pain and grief. So I'm going to be a bad YouTuber and not go back and undo that. I'm just going to tell you to use your puncher and then round out all the edges. Okay. So... This is a little page flip that I made off camera. I can make one on camera with you guys in the next video, but it's just, like I said, it's just a book page and it's a coffee dyed book page and I folded it in half and I just embellished it. That was it. So it's not going to cover the whole page. So again, I want to go in and cover up the page a little bit because I don't want everything showing through and our options are paint or you know some kind of paper something to cover up the background i'm going in with paper because i'm just not patient enough for paint i don't have to cover up the whole page because i know that i'm going to put that flip out right in the middle so i'm just going around the edge here and putting some scraps of paper again love vintage look because you just rip it up and it looks beautiful I decided instead of gluing the whole page down that I want to make the actual page a tuck spot also. So I'm just going around the edges and on the bottom with this glue. That way when I glue it down, you can actually put stuff down into the back there. I personally would prefer wet glue for making pockets because number one, I know it's gonna completely dry, unlike tape, which never completely dries. And number two, I can see where I'm putting it and it can get all the way to the edge. Sometimes with tape, I don't wanna go all the way to the edge because I'm afraid it's gonna stick out a little bit and I'm gonna get that sticky residue on the edge. So I have to leave a little bit of a border but with wet glue, I know that I'm getting all the way to the edge because I'm just going to wipe it off if it seeps out the edge there. So as you can see, you can put something in the back there. And I just absolutely love that. Like I said, in journals, I think it's really important to have plenty of tuck spots for memory keeping. That was it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. We will continue working on this journal throughout the weeks. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.